Wow. <clears throat> We've actually got something looking like a face right now. The mouth, the eye, nose. And unfortunately, out of the frame, below the mouth, there's basically what looks like a, a chin or a beard. Um, I'm almost debating, so well, that's too late now, but, but we've had a definite case of paradoila, however you would pronounce it, uh, with uh, the moon being the eye and uh, the nose and the mouth. And as I said, below the mouth, unfortunately, out of the frame, uh, sort of a jutting beard, chin thing. Um, so for a few seconds there, we had this something looking quite a lot like a face up in the sky and uh, you do have to think you know how seeing something like that might you know impact on the beliefs of an ancient or prehistoric human being um, they definitely did see patterns in the sky uh, they saw symbolism in total solar eclipses um, different patterns in the sun's corona during solar eclipses, different uh, concepts uh, arising out of, you know, what can be perceived in a solar eclipse to say nothing of a lunar eclipse. Um, so, can, you know, one can wonder what they might have thought, you know, when clouds interacting with the moon formed, uh, you know, interesting patterns, shall we say, you know, perceivable faces, perceivable creatures, and so on and so forth. I mean, now we got something kind of interesting. It actually reminds me of the fetus in 2001 Space Odyssey to some extent. Um, so you can see how, you know, if, if I can sort of see that, like I obviously don't take it literally or anything, but, but if I can see something that's similar to, you know, something from my memory, such as the iconic image of the fetus from 2001 uh, Space Odyssey in a cloud passing in front of the moon, then again we have to wonder about what would a prehistoric person have thought uh, if they'd seen something similar um, uh, and different patterns and so on, you know, would they've taken it more literally and you know, like I'm not even taking it as having any particular meaning per se, uh, although that's different in terms of eclipses. I do believe the eclipse uh, actually does have some meaning, uh, but I'm not saying that, you know, I was supposed to see a fetus up there in the sky right now. Um, uh, although I do believe that the uh, perceivable uh, symbolism in total solar eclipses, uh, to say nothing of annual eclipses and uh, partial eclipses, but, but especially total solar eclipses is not accidental. I don't believe the fact that the sun and the moon have almost identical apparent sizes uh, when seen uh, from our planet um, is pure random chance. Um, I don't believe the similarity of the totally eclipsed sun uh, to the pupil and iris of an eye staring down from the sky is just a mere chance coincidence and so on and so forth. So I think some things actually are meant to be perceived, uh, but I'm not sure about the uh, individual cloud patterns at any particular time. Um, so I'm seeing Mars up to my right, uh, so I think I might shut this down. Uh, it was kind of fun with the different cloud patterns passing in front of the moon. I'm just letting the moon, moon move through the uh, frame here, like I'm not tracking the moon, I'm not changing the camera position. Um, but yeah, it's, it's less interesting now with fewer clouds. So I think I will switch it up and, and uh, have a look at uh, Mars. Nothing particularly interesting, but you know, just a little point of light in the sky with clouds going past it. So, so we'll have a look at Mars now as uh, the moon uh, is uh, basically less interesting right now with fewer clouds. That's it for now. Oh, it's uh, November 29th, 2020, just for the record Sunday, November 29th, 2020. Oh, and just for technical details, uh, the lens I'm using is a vintage uh, Vivitar Series 1 uh, lens, uh, uh, 135mm f2.3, uh, set to 5.6 to increase the optical quality. And we're using a almost antique Nikon T800 uh, digital SLR. I mean, within the you know, rapidly changing time 
uh, or advancement of technology with digital cameras, I'd say the D800 is heading into vintage territory already. So, so I mean, I'm being somewhat sarcastic here, but but uh, you know, they had the D810, and now they have the D850, and they're probably going to have a D860 in a matter of. Uh, months um so the the d800 is a, a little dated shall we say but but it's you know a camera that i have and use and enjoy and that's good enough for me you know I, if i had the money to buy a d850 i i probably would or a d780 for that matter or a sony this that or the other thing you know or even a fuji you know if i could buy them all i would <laughs> I have different uses for different cameras at different times you know i'd be happy to have a fuji film kit uh, some interesting Nikon DSLRs and mirrorless cameras um, some Sony's you know I, I different cameras have different capabilities and I use different capabilities for different purposes so I'll, that's my philosophy as far as cameras go